Hope everybody is well today, and I guess I'll just start this video by apologizing that I didn't get something out last week, but my phone died, which then meant I couldn't film, and luckily that's been replaced, and we're back in action. Today's pigment production experiments that I'll be working through is something that I've actually filmed before, I was just unhappy with the results, so I decided I'd do the whole thing again. But today we'll be looking at matter-based pigments, so matter is a, a, um, a plant that's grown across the world, or has been for centuries grown across the world. Its botanical name is Rubia tinctorum, and essentially we collect the root material from the plant, grind it up, and process it to create um, originally just a fabric dye. Um, but it can also be precipitated out into what's called a lake pigment. So often it goes under the name of matter lake or rose matter or it might or it might be more not commonly known as alizarin crimson. And essentially we have evidence that we've been using the matter root as a coloring material for at least 5,000 years now, with the earliest examples being in India, and then you can see it through, move through the world in different examples until we get like a large amount of production in Turkey and the Middle East, and eventually in Europe as well, where it gets famously used for the English redcoats. Um, and it's not until about the 19th century that we see the production of matter pretty much instantaneously die out as a result of the fact that alizarin, which is one of the main colouring um, compounds within the root material, is uh, both simultaneously synthesised in Germany and the UK by chemists in the Industrial Revolution, thus ending the need to grow a plant on a huge scale to try and produce pigment and dye materials from when you can synthesize it in the lab much faster, much greater volumes for much less space. Which is a shame, but also a necessary advancement. Uh, and one of the main drawbacks to the natural um, pigment that's derived from the root material is that because of the nature of the various compounds in there that provide the colour, some of them are more resistant to light and others are less resistant to light, which means that the pigment can have the tendency to fade with um, exposure to UV um, from sunlight, which makes it less than desirable for long-term permanence. Um, with that said, it doesn't mean it's not a usable pigment, it doesn't mean it's not a very beautiful pigment, which it certainly is, and we have heaps of examples of it used throughout art where it's successfully stood the test of time. I think it has a lot of qualities that I really desire, and it can create some very beautiful sort of blood red, translucent -y sort of crimson colours, and in oils in particular it produces a very nice um, red for glazing, which I find very useful in a lot of paintings I do, especially for flesh tones and lips and stuff when you really want to like get those red, warm, deep reds to glow forward, which is really nice. Anyway, that's enough talking, let's get into actually producing the pigment and yeah, hope you enjoy. So just to begin with, excitingly I got this in the mail the other day, which is a book that I um, found in the archives that I was able to get printed for me by Amazon, which was really cool to be able to get an old book actually printed, and this has been already so far an invaluable resource. So this is the title page here of the book. So it's the manufacture of mineral and lake pigments, containing directions for the manufacture of all artificial artists and painters' colors, enamel colors, soot, and metallic pigments. A Textbook for Manufacturers, Merchants, Artists, and Painters by Dr. Joseph Bursch. Bursch? I don't know how to pronounce that. 
Anyway, this is the second edition translated into English, and it was printed in 1901. And it is an incredibly valuable book. Anyway, let's not get distracted by the book. So these are the materials that we will be using today. So I've measured already out into here 100 grams of dried matter root, which has been ground, which I just bought from a um, a dye cloth dyeing supply place. We have in the bottle here some sulfuric acid, and we have some alum, which is potassium aluminium sulfate, and some regular sodium carbonate, which is just washing soda, which you can get from the supermarket. Alum, again, is another one of those things that you can get from either art supplies places or from dye, like fabric dyeing um, supply places. And the sulfuric acid is... It's not necessary for this project. You can do this without it, and I think I will film in the future a version of this which you can do with just kitchen grade materials, which I think will be interesting. But it will make a superior product using the sulfuric acid, so I am going to do that today to begin with. So first things first, we just want to rinse our matter root um, with some water, just as a beginning step. So I'm just get a glass stir rod in there, and we're just kind of washing out any kind of junk or impurities that's, you know, on the root from, you know, on the fact that it was in the ground and, you know, there can be all sorts of different impurities, so. What I'll do is I'll let this sit just for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to just run it through a cloth, squeeze out the liquid. I'm not interested in the water, I'm only interested in the root matter, and I might have to do this in stages because there's quite a lot of it here. And I don't want to make too much of a mess, which I'm invariably going to make some amount of mess. So I'm going to squeeze the liquid out of it. And I'll probably just take the, the leftover root matter here and I'll just pop it into a, a beaker somewhere for later use. Alright, so I've squeezed out all of the liquid from the matter root and the next step is to, we'll start by pouring off or measuring out a little bit of sulfuric acid into this graduated cylinder here. So I'm going to use about 15 mils. Now what we'll start doing is loading the matter into this beaker here. So the next main step will be to boil or to heat the matter with the water and the sulfuric acid for about half an hour at roughly sort of hot boiling water sort of temperatures. So what I've done there, I've just added in some hot water and we're just going to add the sulfuric acid to it. And I've got it on stirring and on the hot plate. So we're just going to sort of heat and boil and cook the mixture for roughly half an hour to an hour. Just stir that sulfuric acid in. You can see my stir bar is not there we go. That's better. Um, it's been roughly half an hour or so now, and 
the matter root's been cooking with the sulfuric acid. And it's about 70 degrees at the moment according to the thermometer. And so what the sulfuric acid is doing is it's breaking down various um, organic compounds that are within the matter root to help um, release the potential dye stuff more easily when it comes to the next step. So the more that that has been broken down and um, liberated, I guess, in some ways, the easier it will be to extract more color material from it, thus making our matter root extend further and giving us more pigment at the end of the day, which is what we want. And so yeah, it's a good old warm heated digestion if you want to think about it alchemically. Alright, so this next step, I've got a big bowl here with some more of the cloth and what we have to do is we'll just pour the hot mixture in here. And we're trying to just drain off this liquid here. Um, which is acidic and then we're going to once we drain off the liquid oopsies so I lost a bit of the matter root in here so I'll have to redrain this. But that's okay. It's quite hot at the moment. I'll just rest that to the side. Just pour this back into the beaker. and get all the matter root out of the beaker. This time, carefully grab everything up so that I don't lose it. There we go, and we'll go for the second. Squeeze out. So now we want to rinse with cold water this through so that we can get rid of the acid because we don't need the sulfuric acid in there anymore it's done its job hopefully this will make it easier to squeeze because it'll be cooler now it's turning my gloves pink which is interesting So using a bit of pH paper, just test, and as you can see it's still turned red which tells me there's still acid in there, so we'll need more water, more rinsing. So on to the next step. So I've measured out 100 grams of the alum here, so the potassium aluminium sulfate. It will serve as the thing that will draw the colouring matter out, so it helps draw the alizarin out of the matter root. And yeah, so it's it's in the most integral part, and so I'm just going to add it to some hot water here. So we want to just get all of that alum dissolved into the liquid first. And once that's dissolved in, I'll start putting the matter root back into here, and we should start seeing the colour come forth. And then once we have a liquid colour solution, We'll take the matter root out and discard that. 
also for you people out there that were asking, we have the stir plate back in action. Already you can see a red colour starting to form, which is a nice and encouraging sign. Oh, it's very red. So it's been heating in the potassium aluminium sulfate or alum solution for a good half an hour to 45 minutes now and as you can see like it's this deep red color it's just absolutely gorgeous so again I'm going to filter it through the cloth but this time I have a glass bowl underneath because this time what we're actually wanting to do is we're wanting to collect the liquid and we're not interested in the matter root anymore because we've extracted the the colorant from it essentially although what I am going to do is I'm going to do a second run with the matter root to see if we can just squeeze a little bit more color out of it plus I've never tried doing a second run so just pour away try not to make too much of a mess but as per usual I tend to make somewhat of a mess let's get the last of that matter root out of there as you can see here from the spill, brilliant blood red sort of pinky rose colors. It's great. Great colors. This time I want to be very careful I don't let any of the root material get into the liquid here. Although I'll be doing a second filtration on it. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to worry about squeezing out the last drops of this because I'm just going to put this straight back into the beaker and go for a second run. So for this next step I basically just want to filter out any fine particulates that made it through the cloth. So all I've got is a funnel here with a little bit of cotton wool in there and we're just going to pour our mixture in carefully. we're making a bit of a mess as per usual. You gotta keep saying that today. You can really see what a gorgeous red colour it is and the huge potential that is gonna come from this. As per usual, filtering is always a slow process. It's imperative that we get this mixture down the bottom here as like clean and as free from any particulate matter because that will end up in the final pigment and we don't want that. We want to be able to produce a clean, pure pigment. So the next step is to make up our soda solution. So what we have here is sodium carbonate and I've measured out 25 grams and I'm going to add 250 mils of hot water. So after filtering out the liquid and getting it back into the big beaker here, um, it's interesting, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but there's like a flocculation. Yeah, I believe that it's some of the alizarin sort of coming out of solution, so I'm needing to heat it back up before I add the soda. And we'll drop in stir bar, get that stirring. And so I'm just under 40 degrees temperature at the moment and so I think I'm just going to slowly add in my 10% solution of sodium carbonate. Before I do that I'm just going to state what I've read here. I want to add a minimal amount of the soda solution in to begin with so that the first lot of precipitate that comes out will be of the finest shade or the, the nicest most brilliant red and then I'll decant the liquid off, collect the residue or the pigment, and add more soda to the rest of the liquor, and that will produce the next finest shade. So what 
we're doing here is a process called laking, which is where you take a soluble color, so that's basically a dye, so a dye is anything that can become a liquid, essentially, or it's a liquid version of a color, and we're making a lake. So we're creating um, something for the dye to attach to. So that's what the sodium carbonate is doing. It's creating, it's forcing the, the alizarin to precipitate out, fix itself onto uh, a suitable body and create a, an insoluble pigment that we can actually use for paint making. Because dyes don't work for paints, because the moment you mix them into a liquid, they'll dissolve. I hope that makes sense. So here goes with the, the precipitation. There you go, you see it happen pretty quickly. And, oh yes, I forgot about this part. There's an excessive amount of frothing that always occurs with this process. Which, honestly, is a bit of a pain. Gonna have to knock back some of this froth and this is gonna take a while because this contains a lot of our valuable pigment in it uh, really really messed this one up <clears throat> crazy red frothing Of course, most of our pigments ended up in the froth here, and not actually in the liquor itself. Just so you can see the crazy amount of pink-red frothing that's going on here. Um, this is obviously way too much in this beaker, and yeah, we're just going to have to work on knocking back this froth. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's pretty ridiculous, but yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep working on this one. So here's the filter funnel after it was filtering for close to like 40 minutes there to suck it all through the filter, but we have this brilliantly red um, pigment here. It's sort of a soft gelatinous -y type thing. So I'm just collecting all the pigment at the moment. I'm trying out what it's like running it through the filter flask here, which is slow going. Then I'm also squeezing it through the cloth here and then scraping up the pigment that's left, which is quicker going but messier, as you can see. Heaps of just red crap everywhere. I should preface or say that there's nothing toxic about the the matter pigments, so this is totally fine to do, apart from the fact that I'm just making a big old mess. But that's okay. I'm producing a decent amount of pigment, and I'm really happy with the color that's coming out. So, like, here's a little bit that I've collected so far. There's a bit more up there that I've collected. And I'll probably, once I get it all together, I'll collect it all together and then dry it out in the dehydrator. But anyway, got to keep going. Plenty more work to go. So what we have here is all the various different little pieces of filter paper with the samples on it um, of collected pigment that I got from all the various uh, batches that I was doing of the Matter Lake pigment. They're mostly dried. Um, not completely. Um, as you can see, I've got an array of different sort of colors that have come out here, so, so, and as you can see, like, on this piece, for example, all of that white crust stuff is basically excess sodium carbonate that's just crystallized out with the matter, which means that I'm going to have to wash all of this pigment again to make sure I clean all of the sodium carbonate out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind these up and group them together in like colors. So the darker ones over here will go together, the mid-tone shades will go together, the more red shades will go together. So I'll probably end up with three different grades, or oh, three different shades of color from this. 
So I'm just giving a rough grind here. I'm not worried about getting this to final pigment particle size. I'm just worrying about getting it small enough that I can give it a good wash. So I thought I'd just show you a little shot here of the washing process. So I'm just going to dump in some of the roughly ground matter into this beaker here and then essentially just pour a little bit of hot water on top which is gonna so now the hot water's on there I'll just give it a stir just to help dissolve any of the remaining sodium carbonate and any other water soluble impurities that are in the pigment there and then just let it settle out which should be fairly quick which you can see there it's settling out at the bottom quite quickly and just dripping down once I'm happy that that's settled enough, I'll just tip it out. So as noisy as it is, I thought I'd just show you the filtering process. So I've got this here, and we're just going to pour it in. Instantly that sucks it dry, pulling it through. But we'll just get a bit more water. Again. That's all of it out and just wait for that to pull through. After the washing process I continued on with basically drying up the rest of the pigment. So after giving it a rough grind I ended up with what was a reasonable yield of pigment, I believe, from 100 grams of matter root, or at least enough that I'm happy that this is a viable method for producing a decent amount of pigment. So the samples that I have here in the front are ones that I've ground and run through a, like, uh, a steel screen like this that um, is just a very fine sieve so that I was able to see the real qualities of the pigment when it's nice and finely ground. And so these are the three, I guess, grades of color that I have here. So we have the lightest pink on the end here. We have a sort of slightly deeper pink and then a much, much, much deeper um, pigment color here. Um, this one by far being the most beautiful shade that I produced. And these up here just correspond to these guys here, but I just haven't gone to the effort of grinding and um, sieving all of these yet, because it's actually a lot of work, and I think I might make a little bit of a DIY bowl mill for milling these finer, so that I don't have to sit there and grind with the mortar and pestle for hours, um, because it gets tedious. But overall, these... I, I'm really happy with how this, this turned out, uh, especially given that I have done a number of matter runs and tests, which I think in the corner here I'll put a little video of me taking um, one of my earlier matter runs into an oil paint where I ground it up with some linseed oil to see what it um, develops into as a colour, and it was really nice, that process. So I'm grateful that I managed to keep that footage. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Um, it's been a it's been a delightful journey with all of this. Um, lots of crazy mess, lots of crazy um, frothing, but in the end, I ended up with a very nice product that I'm very happy with. And so I thank you for taking the time to watch. And I know this was another long video. Um, Maybe we'll try and do a few shorter videos in the future. Unless everybody likes the long format, let me know in the comments below. 
Remember, like, subscribe, and all that. And if you do feel inclined to help support the channel, um, you can head over to my Patreon. And yeah, hopefully everybody's well, and I'll see you next time.